<sighs> Greetings. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to ask, how are you? But I know it's always amazing. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and get started. One thing that um, I'd love to talk to you about is so yesterday I woke up feeling these feelings that were really intense. They were awesome, but also teetering on the edge of like, ah. and um, you know, as I, went, as I look back to um, our session, and I've already watched it, our video like by two different times, um, and took notes for additional questions. But I want to say you mentioned something in there about um, allowing those types of feelings to just essentially they bubble up or occur. And I feel like that happened yesterday morning when I woke up, but it was just there. And so I think maybe that's where I was like a little unsettled because normally like, it's like I activate those feelings with intention. And so yesterday I just woke up and they were there. Um, and again, like it was one of those things where I, I, I was like aware that I could interpret this as anxiety or I can interpret it as an excitement and I could, so could I get some insight from you on what that was and um, what, what I did to have that happen? And is that kind of my, I don't want to say goal, but like, is that like the desired way to wake up every day? Yes, this is exactly as you are describing. Your interpretation is correct. As you are releasing resistance, the natural bubbling up, and the reason it is slightly unsettling is because it is so pure, so such a high vibration with very little split energy to it. It is, it is similar to the energy that Ramona is receiving from Oprah when she first started receiving us and she would have some clients who were summoning great amounts of love. This was very overwhelming to her emotionally. Yeah. She would cry, she would tremble, she would have trouble breathing. Pure love, pure alignment, pure ecstasy yeah very few humans receive a pure dose of this even once in their entire life yeah well it's interesting it kind of took me back to it was different but similar of that magical time a couple years ago and i'm kind of excited to think that it's possible i can get back to that level of sustained ecstasy. And I actually almost asked you about it the other day, and so I ask about it now, is when I was having the, that period of like a month and a half or however long it was, maybe two months of like sustained every day, like such connected alignment, like I could stand in any given place and look around and just see connection after connection of like, and everything I was interpreting would have this amazing feel good meaning. Like every, everything that I saw that had meaning was an ecstatic meaning of just awesome stuff that I could see, oh, that went back to that. And that's how that's all interconnected and how that can go forward. And so is that something I can look forward to reaching again, but with more stability? Yes. Okay, cool. This is what you came here for. Okay. Tell me more about that. When you say that, like I get so excited. <laughs> what I came here for. Um. <laughs> the channeling of pure energy, as you are describing, through the physical apparatus yeah. is delicious. Okay. It is beyond description. Yeah. It is... 
Hmm. Yeah, description. <laughs> 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 but I think the funny thing is I think that's where like I I have some growth from going through it before in a not as stable way as I feel I can achieve it now is like there it was there was a wobble before of like some urgency that was there and an urgency of like I remember in a period of like two or three days I probably took three thousand photos because like I wanted to show people like there was this desire to communicate to other people what I was seeing, um, and and I think what so what came up yesterday when I was feeling this feeling and thinking there was the familiarity of the magical time a couple years ago. It's that I, it's that like, what do I do with this? <laughs> like, um, and I wonder if with yesterday, and that's the reason why I moved my appointment with you to today is because I feel it's related to like what's bubbling up for me. Like, so tomorrow I have my first like workshop and I'm so excited. It's sold out. There's like going to be 22 people there. And it's like, it's the, my law of attraction workshop where I want to show people these like, these techniques to get into alignment and what that means. And um, where is I going with this? I don't even know where I'm going with this. So I'm going to hand it over to you. <laughs> this history that you refer to periodically. Yeah. You are retaining just a pinch of resistance about it. Uh huh. This was your path of least resistance to introduce you to these feelings. Yeah. You were not, you were possibly not quite ready for them. Yeah. But they teased you. Yeah. And gave you motivation. Yeah. To continue to release resistance until until you are ready to allow them a steady ebb and flow of them you do not want a constant diet of these feelings because then even they become less than satisfying yeah so you want the ebb and the flow, the ebb and the flow, the ebb and the flow. Yeah. Okay. That With makes- no resistance, no fear is too strong of a word. There's just a pinch of resistance in your energy field about the past. You can let this go. What you are experiencing now is the culmination of that step. It is not a return to the past in the least. Yeah. Yeah. The drive to share with others is a bit of resistance also. Okay. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Very few humans will be able to meet you where you are. Yeah. Many who are close will come up, will rise to meet you on occasion under certain circumstances. Very few can maintain the same vibration that you are maintaining. Yeah. Do not seek this ratification from others. Okay, I can see that. Because actually, like, one of my questions um, that I'd written down, um, there was actually a question I had before our last session, but it kind of never came up, was um, I had this one client who I actually had in a session with her this morning, and it was a wonderful session, because I think I was able to let go of some resistance and expectations for her to be at a certain level by now at this point. Um, Because I noticed that's one area of resistance I still have sometimes with certain clients there's almost like some frustration or impatience with them taking a couple steps back 
and with it, like, I think I'm like judging myself and my abilities to, and I, I know I don't, I'm not looking to be this like savior of them or me that's doing magic to them, that I'm guiding them. Um, but there's this resistance of me kind of judging myself, but almost more so like I worry about them judging me that I'm not, I'm not as good as I say I am. There's, there's definitely something there with that. How do I best let go of that resistance? It's just a matter of recognizing that's just some silly story in my head and just ignoring it or. Understand and seek within that the results you are getting are being indicated to you by your feelings. The results you are getting will never be solely indicated by your client's feelings or your client's actions. Okay. They will hear what they are ready to hear. Mm -hmm. They will absorb what they are ready to absorb. Mm -hmm. They will act as they are ready to act. Mm -hmm. Your assessment can only be based on how you feel. And how I feel, period, or how I feel about myself? I mean, I guess it's just how I feel, just period, about it. So it's a matter of me just making sure I have the perspective that allows me to feel the best about wherever they are? Yes, continue to maintain as pure and as high a vibration as you can. Do not allow the split that would occur every time you are high, high vibing and your client is coming in at a lower vibration mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Uh -huh. this, like to, this, this gap this gap that you are closing easily between where you are and where you truly are will, will feel very strange and uncomfortable when you perceive it in another because your gap is getting narrower and narrower. Any gap has the component, the potential to feel uncomfortable to you if you give it any credence at all. Uh huh. What's well, a good perspective or, or something I can remember to consider as my perspective as I look at somebody with a gap is like kind of like what you said of like they're they're in the exact right place for them the themselves i don't know like what what it's kind of like the mantra that i could repeat to maintain a wobble free perspective on seeing somebody else's gap i trust myself to say and do exactly what is perfect for this other person uh -huh. and i do this by maintaining my own high vibration got it got it got it got it Good. Okay, that's helpful. And then where is, I, I have this wobble that's getting smaller and smaller. I love this. I love speaking with you because I can just really start really refining and like fine tuning these last little bits and stuff. And not last little bits, not final for you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's this, there's this guy, a fellow law of attraction coach, who, um, it's one of those things almost ever since I ran across him, I got like a, a vibe from him that wasn't fully like awesome. Um, but I interacted with him and I've gotten some value out of interacting with him. Um, and there was a, a good period of time, number of months where like anytime I would see him on Facebook and saw what he was doing or the approach he was taking, to essentially kind of market himself on Facebook was so irritating to me. Oh, it just was so irritating. And it just, right. And then, um, 
I've, I've been able to soften that quite a bit and soften it to the extent where it was like, oh, I could now interact with this group he created in a wobble free way. But then I noticed like, well, I still, there is still some wobble there. Um, but again, some values come out of it. Um, but why is that wobble there in particular with him? Because like, when I look at like, what is he, the law of attraction coach and he uses tapping and he definitely knows what he's talking about. But there's a clear difference between him and like, for instance, Ramona or Kevin or other people, even Abraham Hicks and how I see them. It's a completely different feeling that I get from both of them. And I'm agitated, yet I still gravitate attention to him. So what's the deal with that? This is just a very small amount of resistance located in you that is being activated by him. Yes. We would not worry about this. Okay. Continue to focus on yourself and your feelings and your vibration, regardless of what he thinks or says or does. Yes. And would it be helpful for me to just, you know, block, delete, ignore for a while him so that I'm not continually like keeping that vibration alive so that it can just fade away and then. We do not believe you need to do this. Okay. This is an excellent mirror source of feedback for you. Okay. And opportunity to practice. Him, him showing up in your experience repeatedly. If you were at a different vibration, we would agree with you to remove yourself would be the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. But we feel you reaching for all of your final frontiers. <laughs> We believe you enjoy this challenge. I do. <laughs> yeah, and the, the, so with that, there's a part of me. <laughs> so one of my first questions here <laughs> is, how aligned am I, LOL? <laughs> there's a part of me that like, and I, like, I want to like, what's my score? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like when you said before, like very little humans have reached this level of alignment. There's this piece of me that like, what's the what's the comparison like you know pat on the back maybe or i don't know what what is that and um and um because like i've heard abraham say before like there's maybe like five percent or one percent of of people in the universe in the world that like get this to a, a degree where they have that uh, maintain a really high consistent level of vibration like am i one of them <laughs> It's like a, such a low vibration question to ask. <laughs> it's a step six question. Oh, and step six is what? I haven't heard this one. <laughs> we enjoy Abraham's one through five steps. The yeah. step six, we have added ourselves. This is not an Abraham step, yeah. just to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> Step six is I no longer compare myself to mm -hmm. others or even to myself. Mm -hmm. I am not distracted by the awareness of my manifestations, my abilities, my results. I am simply completely so much in the moment and enjoying the feeling of it, savoring the feeling of it, that there is no longer an observer Got who it. can compare or observe. Got it. Okay, that's yummy. Yes. It's like you're just so in the present moment. Yes. And just in rapture with it. Yes, this is what you came here for. You were brushing into step six repeatedly. Yeah. Okay. 
to stay perfectly in all the steps, including six. You might as well be non-physical. Okay. The juice, the rush is in getting in and then challenging and falling out and then getting in and then challenging and then falling out and then getting in. Okay. When Got the it. gap is not too large, it is very, very enjoyable. Got it. As you are experiencing. Yeah. <laughs> Just like little tiny wobbles in and out. Yes. Yeah. Do you know there are millions, there are millions of humans on this planet that are ready for your message? Oh, it makes me cry. <laughs> like, what's that about? <laughs> I think that's the thing that came up for me yesterday is, um, and then like even thinking about it today, like clearly there's hesitation in telling the old story, but the, the old story was, um, you know, four years ago or so when I learned NLP, the technique that I've been using to get into alignment, like, by the second day of that class, I was like, holy shit, this is the secret to the secret. And like everything just started coming in and it was like, oh my gosh, I just got the keys to the kingdom. And by the end of that course, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm like, Jesus, I can heal me, right? Like, I feel like I had the, right? And so, um, and, and then almost instantly within like, a month coming out of that class, I just hit so much resistance in trying to um, make a business out of this or even just do it regularly or, you know, and even though, and then I even got back in the corporate world because I was, a, you know, used to be a sales trainer. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, talk about practical uses in business, like getting somebody in alignment as an employee so that they can be more productive in this, that, and the other. And so I ended up getting a job in the corporate world and I kind of introduced this to them and I just got like door slammed after door slammed of like, they couldn't understand it. I couldn't explain it. Like we weren't on the same, right? And so I just have like, since four years ago, just feel like, this has been the biggest thing that I wanted so much because it like, it's just everything that I meant to do. But like, I was, I finally feel like over this last six months, I was able to soften that desire enough to yes. actually start letting some things flow with it. Right now I'm like, tomorrow I have four clients. I have a packed schedule and like it is starting to flow. So there was that thing yesterday with having that yummy, yummy feeling, but then also having this memory of like, yeah, but if I, if I focus too much on making this, like propelling forward in this, like, is it too early? Or is like, now have I broken through and turned a corner enough where I can just full steam ahead, go with it, and things will just line up and fall into my lap? Like, there's that, I have this big like caution in my mind that I, because I don't want to, and I know I can't return back to getting so balled up again um, with it. Um, but yeah, and I feel like that's where some, there's the resistance that activates in me is like that whole thing of like, well, how do I take this to the, the next level and get it out to a wider audience and, you know, that. So this is why you want to continue to practice on this one, this rascal that is, that is tweaking your <laughs> vibration just a bit. Yeah. Because the millions who are ready for your message are not where you are. They will tweak you, but that does not make them not ready. Okay. Okay, that's good. So like it made me almost cry again. Like, so it, it's almost like going back to that on Monday when I talked about like the, so I had like a podcast call with the guy who started it yesterday. And I talked about how like, I feel that this is perfect because I, one of my next steps I want to take is to do like group calls where 
I help people activate their vibrations and one caller might raise their hand and I take them through an NLP exercise that helps release resistance and this, that, and the other. And I know that there's going to be plenty of people on those calls that are just totally could potentially tweak my vibration, like either, um, like accuse me of lying about how this works or just like, for instance, I'll, I'll bring up this guy to get more clarity. Um, this group last, winter he hired me as a coach but he was like the most difficult client ever he even said coming into it like i'm gonna be a difficult client even though like he knows abraham hicks all the way he knows napoleon hill neville goddard like you know all this stuff and it was almost like he knew it so much he constantly was trying to challenge me and wouldn't you know but he clearly wasn't doing it well <laughs> on his way but he wasn't anyway um so when I run across people like that, I mean, oh. <laughs> 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 and he's somebody that I, I figured out six months ago, I had to block him. I couldn't, I couldn't even, I fired him as a client and gave his money back on his remaining session and stuff. And um, he was so argumentative, even trying to become a client again. Like I, had to block his messages and I also had to block my, cause anytime I would even see his name, I would like, like the art, like I would literally hear him and me arguing in my head. And so now I feel way less agitated by him. Like um, I could totally see posting the podcast with me and him talking and, and maybe putting a comment and I wouldn't see it obviously, but um, I would be less bothered. But is that part of like, just what, my continual growth needs to be is to just find a way to just not be bothered to be unwobbable. <laughs> yes. Unwobbleable. <laughs> <Wobble -able>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the most delicious outcome for you, the most delicious application of your own energy. Yeah. Is to continue to practice which you can do now, we agree that back then that was the path of least resistance to block. Yeah. Yeah. It is no longer your path of least yeah. resistance. Yeah. Because you are looking for the leverage to reach everyone on the planet who can benefit from your message uh -huh. and the rest of the planet that can benefit from all of the people who can be reached raising their vibration as a result. Yeah. This is the work you are doing. This is the calling that is yeah. pulling you. Totally. Pulling. That's what, like, for the longest time, I'm like, I want to be, like, how Abraham Hicks says, where, like, it's a very clear message. There's no, that's when, again, like I mentioned on Monday, I wanted to be able to start channeling because I want to be able to reach a lot of people, but... I don't want to speak conflicting messages or things that aren't in true alignment with the truth of how all this works. Like I, like, I think that's also one reason why I prevented myself from getting out there more until I feel I'm, I'm, I understand all this that much more. I mean, if I, if I think back two years ago when I, I thought I was ready and what I know, knew then versus what I know now and can practice myself is like a whole different ball game. Yes. A whole different ball game. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how, how advanced I thought I was two years ago compared to like what I know now. It's just not even comparable. Okay. So clients like the client I had this, it was, it was such so great. Cause I, it was like a couple weeks ago that she had her last appointment. And I remember I left that appointment so agitated. <laughs> I know she got upliftment in the end, but, um, it took a good four or five days of me kind of settling down my agitation to kind of coming to peace with that 
by a, a week later, so a week ago, I was able to actually have a, a good interaction with her on Facebook Messenger that actually did re-agitate me, but I felt like I was stable enough at that point. And like, what happened was, this is what happened was that I actually ended up developing a question to bring to you about like, how do I deal with a client like this? And I think that's one of the things that I actually got the answer before talking to you. And basically it had me taking, because like every comment she would say on this messenger was similar to like in a, in a session where she might say something positive, but then she would put like the butt. And so rather than kind of try to talk with her back, like I just took what she wrote and I scratched off the wobble part and fed it back to her and she loved it and she could see it. Like, cause it was clear as day. Like if you read it this way, it's like, eh. if you read it this way, it's like a positive thing. And so, and so I guess that's just what is my, I'm supposed to just continue to do. I have some clients that are easy and peasy, but other clients just use as an opportunity to fine tune my ability to communicate effectively and wobble freely with them. Your ability to see the highest and best in them. If you see it, you will communicate it quite easily and quite well. Yeah. Practice seeing. This was an excellent example. Scratch off the butt. Yeah. Do this verbally. Do this visually. Okay. Do this vibrationally. Yeah. Scratch off everyone's butt. Scratch we off may have a new. We may have a new quote. I love it. I love Scratch it. Scratch off everyone's butt. <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> be like, what does she mean? Continue to practice. Continue to practice this with everyone you can find. Yeah. Because the button, the button is very visible. And we don't mean consciously, but it is very accessible to everyone on the planet who would push it when you have a button that's pushable. Yeah. Practice releasing any, any perception that there's anything wrong with anyone. Practice seeing their highest no matter who they are and what they say and what they do. Yeah. Well, you know what is so funny about that is literally just, it was only just a, a few days ago that we did that exercise with the butt. And she showed up today so different. Like, yes. So different. Like it yes. was pleasant right from the start and the whole way through. And I was able to, um, you know, normally in a session, to A, take advantage of the time the most because about uplifting the vibration, but also because sometimes, and it was always the case with her, the more she talked, the more she just talked about the old story. But today I was able to just listen to her and she was, she talked for a good hour and it was pleasant the whole time. And you know, it, it was, um, it was lovely. This is the largest service you can give anyone is to see them perfectly. Yeah. To see them as perfect. To scratch off their butt. <laughs> scratch mm -hmm. off their butts and scratch off my butt ends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> my butt ends. And <laughs> 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 All right. So, um, Do you have my questions? <laughs> um, so there is, so one thing I'm noticing is like in preparing for a session with you, it make it causes me to focus to nail down a specific important question 
which sometimes get answered before I talk to you. And if not, then you answer it. And then everything speeds up in my life. So is, is getting even more in flow and faster flow for the things that I want to see a matter of coming up just with really good questions every day. Like for instance, like I'll go back to like this one lady that um, I followed back in the day. Um, she has this like, what would it take question? So she's like, one of the best questions you could ask to help manifest things is like, oh, what would it take to fill in the blank? What would it take to earn $10,000 this month? Or what would it take to whatever it is? Um, what do you think about the, the value of asking clear questions like that to kind of help bring something to you faster, an experience or an answer to you faster? In general, we do not encourage a question such as what would it take because it is, is it a, because it is a how question. How can I do this? Yeah. How can I do that? Uh -huh. Good. It's none of your business how <laughs> it's going to happen. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. So what would be a, a better question? You you pose several different questions at once. Is it better to ask questions at all? Okay. If you are using questions to speed the momentum, you are introducing a little bit of resistance that's not necessary. Okay. The pure desire with no question is the fastest route, ah. the cleanest, most pure route yeah. to the manifestation. Okay. So there is still a, a, a focus on what you want, but it's without a question. It's just, I want that. Yes, because a question is always lower vibration than the answer. Got it. Yeah. Ask and then just give it. <laughs> Instead of saying, I want that, just give it. <laughs> It's two different vibrations, but it's also definitely lower to ask yeah. and higher to receive the desire. Yep. So every question lowers your vibration. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. In a way. Yeah. This is not to say don't ask your questions. Yeah. Because the answer can raise you up. The question comes from where you are right now. Yes. The question does not have to lower you unless it's a how question. Yeah. A yep. how question can lower your vibration. Yeah. Whereas like and a why question can just provide an answer. Yes. Yeah, so yes. A why question. That's the general category. Mm -hmm. What? What would please me the most? What do I want now? What feels better? What's and why's, as long as the why is the motivation, the desire, And not a past looking, why did I do that? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, right. yes. So in thinking about my workshop tomorrow, I'm getting all sorts of interesting feelings right now. Um, It's, it's, there's a, there's a, a totally a big part of me that doesn't want to like plan anything yet. I still see like a need to like, at least know what I, 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 I see that it'd be beneficial for the first 
five or 10 minutes to have like a loose outline of an agenda. It might even start with like, okay, housekeeping items, bathroom is there. You don't have to raise your hand, just go. Or like, you know, <laughs> um, and explain kind of how things are gonna go. But then I just see it being just really like this, a flow thing. Um, should I just trust that in? <laughs> Yes, the feelings that you were having just now when you said, I'm having these feelings. Yes. Clearly visualizing the success, the excitement, the, the fast moving vibration, yeah. the high the vibration. And the, yeah. Yes, the yumminess, Play. the deliciousness. Yes, the playfulness of it. This is the best thing you can do okay. to prepare. Okay. The vibration of what you were doing just then rolling off of you in powerful waves this is the most powerful way to influence everyone around you yeah and especially when they've come to hear you specifically yeah which means they are focused on you uh -huh. and you are focused on them uh -huh. these yeah. waves of of feelings, of, of visualizing, of imagining, of seeing the highest and best outcome. These will permeate everyone present yeah. in a way that will change their lives much more than any single word you could say. Got it. Yeah, that's what I was even like over the last couple of days, especially like yesterday, like it came to me like, how words really aren't that important. It's like, I, I could make little sense at all <laughs> to them. <laughs> they might yeah. not understand what I'm saying at all. But this just, is so true. This is true beyond your wildest dreams. Yeah. Well, cause it's so funny. Cause I think back to like, whenever I'm talking to somebody and I notice like, I'm clearly having the biggest like impact and we're having like the most and like I don't know what the f I'm saying and I'm, I know I'm all over the place like I'm just like I'm on tangent and I'm like they might ask a question I don't even know if I answered it but like there's the flow there and the energy is so uplifted it doesn't matter and I almost think like that's one reason why I kept butting up against in corporate world because they they want it to make sense they want to be able to write out what you say and it be logical and like have a point where it's like what i do it's like the energy that's in the moment and you're just flowing with it and it doesn't really matter the words that it took to get you there that's what they think they want yeah but what they actually want is results yeah totally totally yep yep as you release your past experience with corporate America as uh -huh. they call it yeah. and release any limiting beliefs about what it is that they actually do want yeah, you will become more and more powerful and more valuable yeah to those same people yeah that reminds me of the post i just saw from kevin the other day i ran across it i think it was in his testimonial about you is that you mentioned like stop trying to put them in a box of what they really want or something and and then he ended up presenting law of attraction information to a bunch of ceos or something in vegas because he was able yes. to thinking he knew what they wanted or what they he just listened to what they said they wanted, but really understanding what they really, really want is results and movement. Yeah. Yes. Because as a single group, imagine what they are asking for. Yeah. And how powerfully they are asking. Totally. I think that's one thing that gave me so much like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing in the beginning. And for whatever reason at the time where my vibration was and I allowed a wobble to happen, I just like, and because I remember in my head going like, I can give them results. I know that that's what they want, but like I have to cross through all these gates of like, 
to get there. Anyway, um, so just fucking ignore that and just <laughs> be me. And like, yeah, okay, good. Follow the path as it continues to wind around. Yeah. As you look back over these, we believe you said two years. Yeah. There is not a linear path in there. <laughs> It will continue to be nonlinear. Yeah. Follow it wherever it leads. Yeah. Follow your feelings just as you are doing. And you may be very surprised where you end up. Yeah. Now, it's funny that you say that because I was just looking at my, one of my best friends, Karen, that I was telling you part of the wolf pack. This morning, I got a message from her where she got this new sound drum and she was playing it for a good couple minutes. And I was just looking at her going, knowing that, she, cause she only just got introduced to the law of attraction like last summer or something. So it's only been a year, but she's really hooked right into it and really has transformed her perspective and energy and vibrations and everything. And just like thinking like, man, I bet a year ago she would have no idea she'd be sitting in her living room playing this sound drum. <laughs> yeah. And like, you can't plan for that. And like, when you just let go, that's when like some like, really cool, massively cool experience like that comes into your experience so fast is because it's. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the other interesting thing in the last couple of days that's kind of just seemed to speed up is, again, going into like, um, ran across these two ladies on Facebook, like somebody friended me and I looked at them and they seemed cool and into law of attraction. And then I looked at another friend of theirs. And I was like, ooh, super duper cool, massively into law of attraction. And then together, like now this lady just invited me to, she's doing this group call on Sunday. And it's like 15 bucks or something. And I'm like, yeah, I'll check that out, right? Because I know I'm going to get value. I've already gotten value from my interaction with her. And then it's also already opened up like, oh, because she actually, I was asking her, like, is it a Zoom call or just an audio call? Because she kept referring to it as an audio call. She goes, no, audio, because with Zoom, this is what I found. I'm like, oh, man, that makes so much sense. So just even in me thinking about doing these group calls on Zoom, like, now I'm already thinking, like, Maybe I don't want to do audio because, yeah, that is distracting. And the, 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 anyway, so, um, so yeah, just going with the flow and kind of going back to like that yes challenge, like saying yes to things and not like, uh, um, yeah, judging it. Okay. Not only saying yes, but seeing the yes in everyone and everything. Ooh, tell me more about that. Seeing the yes in everyone and everything. It's the same as perceiving the highest. Yes. Scratching off the butt. Yep. Yep. See the yes. See the yes. The yes and the value and the gift and the message. Yes. Yeah. So when I woke up this morning, I had this little book on my bedside table and like I just felt that impulse like it was called like I felt that, that like grab it and I almost didn't, but then it was like a clear yes to grab it. And I felt the impulse was to like ask you about it. And so, um, and it kind of goes in with these two ladies I ran across on Facebook over the last couple of days and kind of what you were just saying of seeing the yes in everybody. And um, it's, and I, I did start reading it when I was on vacation in Mexico and read maybe half of it or three quarters of it, it looks like. And I, I really felt like I got a lot of value of it, but then like I haven't finished it, but maybe just the concept of it, like even just the title of it says, I am the open door. It's ascended master discourses or something. And is it the concept of like, I am the open door and just let, let whatever is impulse to flow through me in a word or an action to just do it because the person that's in front of me, it might be a message for them and vice versa kind of thing. Like don't kind of hold back on an impulse to say something or what, what, what are your, why was I impulse to ask you about this book? <laughs> hmm. 
I am the open door. We believe you are your own open door. Mm -hmm. The natural inclination is to see how can I help others with this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another perspective would be what am I giving to myself mm. through this? I like that. Ooh. I am my own open door. I like that. It's like opening up to itself. Yes. So many of these spiritual gurus recommend policies and procedures that slow momentum, that take the focus off of the self and onto the service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The service is delicious, yeah. but it must flow from the self, from the joy, from the love, from the full tank of love. And then it flows with no need to direct it, to make decisions about it. It flows out almost without consciousness. Yeah. You are your own open door. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna listen back to this a few times. And just really, because as you're, you're talking about that, I just picture like being in front of a room with people. And so it's not about my service to them. It's about me getting to experience everything that's on the other side of the door for me. Yes. And sharing that experience with them yeah. is life changing. Yeah, for everybody. Yeah. Many will try to call you their open door. Uh -huh. This has nothing to do with you. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's like a change of perspective of like, here I am playing with what I know and just having fun and people can come and play with me or not, but I'm not here to teach them something necessarily. They'll, they'll get something if they want, but it's this play. And meanwhile, I'm getting so much juice and everything out of the interaction like even just it just dawned on me the i heard an abraham clip the other day and they're just talking about how the non-physical gets so much pleasure like abraham or even i'm sure you get so much pleasure from the asking of the new questions because it's an exploration for them as well into the new and that's what yes. i was interacting with people in this group it's not just me repeating some knowledge that I think I know it's playing with what I know in the moment and having it unfold. And there's just always new stuff to chew on. Exactly. Yeah. It's the difference of step six. Yeah. A teacher is not in step six. A beer is in step six. Yep. Got it. So like a teacher is just regurgitating is what you like that kind of teacher that you're referring to where a step six. A teacher is self-aware. I am going to impart this information to these people because they need it or because they have asked for it. Yeah. I have to be, in order to do that, I have to be aware of the difference in our vibrations. I have yeah. to be comparing my vibration to theirs. Yep. Or my skill set to theirs. Yep. The lower the vibration of the subject matter, the more 
word oriented and pedantic the teaching is, but even teaching at the very highest level requires an awareness, a comparison of the gap. Yeah. The step six is not aware, simply being for the joyfulness of it, for the ecstasy of it, for the value of it. For the wow. beauty of it. That's so beyond helpful. Like I so get that. I so get that explanation that the teacher has is aware of the gap and like that and that that just gets me all bunged up. But if I just be and play and we're just all just playing with something together, there's no comparison of you know, you don't know that or whatever. In the moment, we all know what's going on and can experience the shifts. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That's amazing. So good. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, we're right on time. That went Beautiful. fast. That was so good. That was just the perfect last question and answer. <laughs> no, that was so good. <laughs> I knew today I was gonna be today it was a good day to do it. <laughs> Thank you, O'Brien. Thank you. We enjoy this very much. Are you complete? Yes. <laughs> yes. We are complete. <laughs> what a great, what a great session. Oh my God, Gina. 